Welcome to the How Do I Become a Christian podcast brought to you by myself, David Mackrath. I'm a Christian, I have been for many years, but uh, there was a time when I myself wasn't a Christian and I became a Christian. How do we become Christians? What makes us Christians? Well, in a nutshell, believing on Jesus Christ, knowing him as our saviour from sin is what makes us Christians. But the purpose of this podcast is to try and explain that more clearly and to help people who may be asking questions to find the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves. So I'm going to start by reading from the Bible, which is the Word of God, and I'll read just one verse today, and that's from the book of Romans in the New Testament and verse 16. Paul the Apostle says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. When we speak about Jews and Greeks there, we could speak about everybody anywhere in the world. You're either a Jew or you're not a Jew. And uh, this gospel, this gospel uh, which comes from God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, is for everybody everywhere at all times in history. And you can find the Lord Jesus today if you seek him and look for him and uh, cry out to him and call on him. He will have mercy on you and he will save you from your sin. So the Apostle Paul says that the gospel of Christ, which he's not ashamed of, and as a Christian I'm not ashamed either, this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now, when we consider this gospel of Jesus Christ, this good news of Jesus Christ, we must ask where the power comes from to save us from our sins. This gospel, remember, is about how we're saved from our sins, how we find that salvation that comes from God, and how we find everlasting life. And it takes power to save us. It takes a mighty power to save us from our sins. What sort of power and where does that power come from? Now imagine you had an electric chainsaw and you wanted to cut down a tree and you got to the tree and the cable was all there and you pressed the button and nothing happened. Of course it doesn't have to be a chainsaw, it could be any electrical device for any purpose. And It's the usual things, if if nothing happens, well, is it plugged in, is it switched on, is it connected to the mains supply of electricity? You might find that you've forgotten to plug it in, that's unlikely but it's possible. Or you've forgotten to switch it on, unlikely but possible. Or there might be a mains power cut or some other explanation, the saw itself might have something wrong. But that isn't going to work without power, is it? Electrical power, but we can't be saved by electrical power uh, in our days. Another example, think about gyms um, up and down the country. And in those gyms, people are working out and they're trying to get stronger. They want to power lift and uh, therefore they have to build up their muscles. There's a kind of power that they're looking for. And uh, so they put much effort and strength into that and they become power lifters, but Physical power, physical strength doesn't save us from our sins. It can't deliver us. It can't give us peace with God. It's a different kind of power we're looking for. And uh, the testimony of Scripture when it cu- is clear. When it comes to the salvation of our souls, we are powerless. When it comes to everlasting life, peace with God, the forgiveness of sins, we have no strength and no power whatsoever, not at all. We may be strong physically, we may um, have a powerful vehicle or something like that, but that kind of power is worthless when it comes to the preaching of, when it comes to believing on Jesus Christ for the salvation of our souls. So there's no physical strength that can save us. And it's not mental either. In the Bible it talks about the gospel being foolishness to the Greeks, by which it means that if we were to think that our salvation came by a degree or by a PhD or something like that, if we were to think that worldly wisdom or our own wisdom could save us, we would be disappointed. It's not a mental um, power. It's a not a moral power either. Not because we don't need moral power, but because we have no moral power. We've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And when we've sinned, we have no power, no strength left to please God. There are lots of people who think they can, who think that God should accept them because of their good works, but morally we are dead in our trespasses and sins. So it's not a moral power. We have no strength, no power. We have no physical strength, no mental strength, and no moral strength to save ourselves. Imagine that you were a person on a ship, maybe perhaps one of those old sailing ships or something, and you were sailing across an ocean, maybe the Atlantic Ocean, or maybe the Pacific, and about halfway across, you fell overboard, and there you were in the water, and you see how the ship is getting further away, sailing on. And sin is like that. When we fall into sin, 
which we all have done. We all have a sin nature. We've all broken God's commandments. Our sins have separated us from God. Uh, and there's a great gulf between us. As you look at the ship in despair, the ship gets further away. You call out, but the distance is too far. You try and swim, but you're not a good swimmer and the ship is moving away with great speed and you start to despair. You are helpless. You cannot save yourself. That's what we're like before God. We cannot save ourselves. We have no strength and no power. There is a great gulf between us and God because of our sins. God is holy. God is pure and he cannot accept us in our sins. Now, how would that person, how would you, if you were in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean watching that ship sailing away, how would you be saved? Well, then you see a deckhand and he looks over the stern and he sees you and he cries out with all his might, man overboard, man overboard, and points at you. And very suddenly the whole ship is alive with activity, all hands on deck, and slowly the ship turns around and it comes back and it picks you up. You're totally dependent upon that ship. Now, we are just as helpless spiritually. If Jesus Christ hadn't come into the world, if he hadn't died, there would be no salvation. All of our religion wouldn't save us. All our, uh, all our um, religion would be worthless. It cannot, could not help us. Only, only because Jesus Christ has died and only because the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world can we be saved. Just as if you were in the Atlantic Ocean, you were helpless and you needed to be saved by somebody else. You could not save yourself. You couldn't think of swimming to New York or to uh, Liverpool, for example. Um, just as you were helpless in that situation, that's what we're like spiritually. We have no strength, no power to save ourselves. Now I say this because there are many who think they do have power and strength. They think that salvation is partly done by God and partly done by themselves. But we have no strength. We have no works. We have nothing to please God. Now, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul tells us, is the power of God unto salvation. What we could not do, God has done by sending his son. It was while we were without strength, while we were helpless, while we were lost, while we were ruined, while we were unable to save ourselves, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He came when we were helpless and lost in our sins. And the extraordinary thing is that the cross of Jesus Christ, that is a man nailed to a cross 2,000 years ago and raised up between the heavens and the earth, that that cross shows us the Lord Jesus Christ as the power of God. You say, but all I see is a man dying in weakness. Well, that is what we see, a man dying. But there's no weakness there. The Lord Jesus Christ, consented to be crucified the lord jesus willingly went to the cross the willing the lord jesus remained upon the cross and refused to come down even though he could have done if he chose to and he did so that he might become the power of god unto salvation to all those that believe when the lord jesus died on the cross and when that man hung there in apparent weakness the most extraordinary powerful events were going on Jesus destroyed the works of the devil when he died upon the cross. All the powers of darkness, all the devils and demons were raging against him and he defeated them all. He defeated the last enemy, which is death. He proved that by being resurrected, being raised from the dead. And he made an atoning sacrifice for sin. He opened a door. He made a way whereby we who are sinners could be saved and be reconciled to Almighty God. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did on that cross. And all that power is seen in the Lord Jesus Christ and it's proved by the power of his resurrection. And that gospel is brought to us by the power of the Holy Spirit who comes and makes us new creatures in Christ Jesus. And he shows us the Lord Jesus and he brings us to repentance from our sin and he persuades us of our need. And therefore, uh, we're cleansed of our sin. Paul says, the power of God unto salvation. I was helpless, I was weak. Nothing I did could save me. The more I struggled, the further I sank in my sins. And then one came along who was stronger than me. One who came along who loved me and gave himself for me. And I found the power of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we must repent of our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus. That's all we need to do. To turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, to repent of our sins, and to look to Jesus Christ alone 
and we are saved by the power of God. Let me read that verse again. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen.